Okay, again. This should be presentation of DEPCONF 9 bits for the DEPCONF 9 somewhere. We currently only have one presentation. If another one shows up during this buff, great, fine, we can add them too. But for now, it's only Extremadura in Spain with, what was your name? Cesar. With Cesar. So, have fun. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Cesar, as Kane said. And <laughs> I'm here to present the bit of Extremadura to host DevConf 9 in Spain. I work as a GNU Linux developer for the regional government, and we are interested in hosting DevConf for several reasons. One of them is that we love Debian, and we like to support free software projects like this one. So let's start. Where is Extremadura located? Well, Extremadura is in the southwest part of Spain, near the border with Portugal, and in the middle of a triangle between Madrid, Seville, and Lisbon. You can see it with the arrow. The city we have chosen is Cáceres, which is the capital of the Cáceres province, with 91,000 inhabitants, and also considered as a World Heritage Center by the UNESCO. It's a beautiful city, not because I live there. And Cáceres is also one of the main cultural cities of Spain for centuries. And it, it is also a bidder for the European capital of the culture in the year 2016. One of the good things about Extremadura or Spain is that we don't have any hardware restrictions and no import regulations. You can see here a picture of the Extremadura Embedian work session. And you may know some of these guys and girls. So you'll probably realize that they brought a lot of weird hardware and weird computers to Extremadura without any kind of problems. Europe and States too, I can see Joy there. Never mind. We have here also people from Russia, three or four, I can see. So there is no problem with the uh, hardware. We will be able to deliver visas for everybody. This was, uh, sorry. Hello. Um. Uh, I've been there, uh, so I was in the, I was in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Amaya was there also, and uh, well, there I was helping with the staff organizing, and uh, you can see people from the U.S. But they sponsored their trip for Joey Hess. There's a Wookie from United Kingdom and. There's people from Russia that did like a really good job getting their visas because there was like a lot of uh, stuff to do for them to be able to, to come over. And uh, it, that uh, meeting really helped uh, the project, not just the embedded Debian project, but it helped a lot with the Army L port. Uh, there's Leonard there too. He's the, the guy that did, did that port. So that was a really, we, the time that we spent there, uh, it was really helpful for the project. Thank you, Hector. 
We also held the internationalization work session there in Casar de Cáceres. And you can see here people from all over the world. I can see people from Bangladesh, from India, Israel, Japan, South Africa, and almost all around the world. And without problems, we can even sign some invitations with the minister signature, so it is easy for us to <laughs> collect all the people from all around the world, as you can see. An important thing is the venue, of course. It will be free of charge for the Debian project. The cultural institution behind the management of the complex is wanting to sponsor the conference. So it will be easy because we don't need to pay for the facilities of the venue. It is also really, really close to the sleeping quarters. The city of Cáceres is not a big city, so we have almost everything we need there. And as a public building, it is also prepared for handicapped people with elevators, ramps, banners in braille, and it's a safe place too. And of course, the main thing and the main point is that audio, video, and the network is already installed there. The complex is made for hosting some concerts and a lot of conferences too. We have a lot of rooms we can use. It is an old monastery. And for instance, we have the main auditorium, which is a Gothic church of the 15th century. We can have there 60, his, sorry, 60, 150 people with laptops and computers there. There's also an organ there, and there'll be no need to. <laughs> There will be no need to fix it like some of you did with the one at, at the night venue <laughs> because it's still working. We have another auditorium, Malinche, with 290 seats. The Europa Auditorium with 112 seats. A room called Miguel Hernández with 55 seats. The Garcia Matos room with 177 seats. We also have four cloisters, four stands, exhibitions, front desks, and whatever we may need. Four PIP rooms for servers, workshop, booths, or whatever. And there are also more than 20 or 30 other rooms for whatever we may need. So. I think that it is a good, a good place to host DevConf. And of course, <laughs> you can see here the smelly cheese of the French guys and wine also. So there is no food or, or alcohol limitations and it will be open 24-7. The restaurant will be a big tent inside the complex and will offer an open buffet every day to address every kind of special needs some people have because of religious issues or allergics or... What? <laughs> Hi, I'm Andreas Schulder. Do you have kosher food? We can manage, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also the food will be offered by the government. So it will be free of charge for the Debian project. Sorry? Oh, why not?
the main thing, the network. We can hire unlimited number of 20 megabits per second DSL connections. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, asymmetric. And we hired even for the last Free Software World Conference three special connections with a guaranteed upstream rate that, that would be good for the video streaming. We can also do so here. It is a monastery, but it is all wired, so it, it is very easy to be covered with wireless access points. And we will have full access to the net administration. The accommodation in Catherine is quite easy to manage because there is there are a lot of hostels, hotels. We have two hall of residence for the students we can maybe use for DevConf. A first class campsite, 11 hostels, th more than 30 hotels, and it will be very cheap or free, depending on the agreements we can sign with those hall of residences. And of course, we can also have fun and we can go to the swimming pool. There is a sports city 50 meters away from the venue. You can, or we can also visit the old town of Cáceres which is a World Heritage Center, as I said before. We can also travel to Merida in the day trip to visit the archaeological ensemble of Merida, which is, is, all, which is, is, it is also a World Heritage Center. And there are a lot of monuments, museums, palaces, and stately homes that are very beautiful. In the Cáceres province, there are also natural parks, and you can enjoy <laughs> with uh, a nice rural tourism. <laughs> Thank you. And we have already contacted these sponsors that <laughs> are interested in sponsoring the DevConf in Extremadura. So if you want to know anything more about our bid, you can visit the wiki page. There is a lot of information there. So I invite you to visit it and send me some comments or suggestions, questions. So do you have any question, please? I have several questions. Um, you say in the, one of the starting slides you said that the sleeping quarters were close. Um, how close? There is one 20 meters away from the venue, <laughs> for instance. And the other one is less than 200 meters away. And all the hostels and hotels I put on the slides are less than one kilometer away from the venue. So. And the close ones, which capacity? Where are you at? Pardon? That's me. Oh, okay, sorry. Which, which capacity did, the, did these close venues have, the, the close accommodations? It can be used for 200 people okay. each. Um, and when we, during the day, the year would be best for like climate-wise and um, for you? I don't. I don't understand the question. What do you think it would be nicest during the winter, the summer, the spring, oh, or maybe spring or at the end of the, or at the end of the summer? The the Monastery is quite fresh too, and it, it also has air conditioning. 
for so, the servers or for the people. So that would be in like May or more April? May, or? September. Mm -hmm. If you want to enjoy the Spanish hut, so you can go to, to Extremadura in June or August too. But. And um, <laughs> do you have any idea about um, costs per person per day? Cost per person per day, well, main costs are the flights. So maybe in the wiki there is some information about that. It dep yes, it, the, oh, okay. If we use the hall of residences, it, it may be probably free of charge because the regional government can sign agreements with them. And if we, have, if we use the hostels, it will be between 15 and 30 euros. Yes, um, well, the cheap, uh, a simple accommodation, accommodation is usually good enough. Um, that would be free then, or what? I don't really know it uh, now, but probably. And uh, what about food? Yes, the food will be sponsored by the regional government. And then you had on the sponsors page some companies which don't have anything to do with Debian. Um, yes. Why would they sponsor us? Because they have been very interested in supporting free software projects and they have also sponsored before one or two of our meetings, the Free Software World Conference of Badajoz, the Free Software World Conference of Merida. They were sponsors. And you uh, explicitly mentioned Debian in this when you ask them? Yes. Okay, great. It's no problem mentioning Debian or GNU Linux or free software. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, here. Yeah. About the Hall of Residence yes. you mentioned, can you explain a bit more what it's like and uh, uh, what are our chances of being there? Because you said it might be free. Can yes, the, um, the Hall of Residence is used by students, so we have to find a right uh, slot of time to be able to use the, these facilities because the rest of the year it is being used by students. But is it like a hostel? What, what is it like? It is like rooms you can use to live every day for students. So you have bathroom in every room, you have two beds, or one, or three. Okay, well, the thing that most amazes me so far is that, uh, well, I have insisted the people from Spain on, on uh, getting DevConf there for several years, so it took uh, too long for you to formally present a, candid a candidacy. And uh, well, uh, although from all the alternatives presented today, it is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would still vote for it. <laughs> no, uh, but well, on to, <clears throat> to a different point. I know that the commitment from the Extremadura government is uh, long-standing and I don't think there will be any problems, but we have to keep this in mind. If I understand correctly, next year, you will have uh, general elections, right? No. No. Okay. <laughs> this year, you already elected. And, and the, the government is still sympathetic. Still yeah, the, the same party okay. won. So. I just want to remind people, please stand up when you get the mic and you are talking. So the camera can see you. Thanks. Answering to Gunnar, uh, I have to say that I am one of the Debian developers from Spain who doesn't like the idea to have DevCon in Spain. I don't like it because I love to go to another country by DevCon. But I have to say that after seeing all the several bits for these past years, I think this is the best one I have seen until now. So thinking as Debian developer, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I completely agree and well, uh, it seems this year we will not have a competition, which in the end may be good because it will save us from uh, many problems we had. 
Uh, but, uh, well, I am asking this question specifically because I think it's a very important point that in the end was, uh, was taking into account into deciding for DevConf 8. I mean, sometimes, and well, even uh, you as an European country will surely understand this, sometimes trusting the, the governments of uh, Latin America and uh, Spain and, uh, is not very easy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, th that, that brings several doubts to my mind, but... Is there any other bit that want to present itself? Or do we currently have none here? Okay, the so one thing to keep in mind is that this is not the decision for the next, for the DEPCONF 9, but only a presentation. Decision is sometimes after DEPCONF, and as we have no other one, go on with questions. Um, I wanted, regarding the decision thing, um, uh, mention that uh, it is, I think, not very, we, 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 if we can be flexible about deciding later, we perhaps uh, should decide later because um, if we are not, not forced into making a decision now, why do it anyway? Yeah, I know. I, I know that this is not the decision point, but um, like, I guess you guys are ed actually dedicated to this, and you wouldn't have a problem really deciding only one year ahead. I'm not sure. Yes, no problem. Yeah. Sazan. Hello. Uh, there is always one point that earlier or later hits us during the comps. Uh, I don't know if you already speak about that, but accessibility. We have disabled persons, so uh, for our venues, our places, our routes, everything, you need to keep in mind that we have wheelchair people that will need to cross that area. Mm -hmm. So for everything that you program or schedule, keep in mind that. So yes. it, it's good to, to, to hear and have that documented on the wiki about Yes, it is. It actually is documented on the wiki. I told that it is a public building, so it is prepared with ramps, elevators, and even with banners in Braille for those blind people. So we can even visit the old town of Cáceres with disabled or handicapped people without any problem. It is a quite modern city and prepare for all this stuff. Okay, uh, as a person who has been to the internalization uh, uh, conference there, uh, the question is, how will you handle the transfer from the airport to Extremadura, which takes up to three hours? Yes, if we want to use cheap airlines, we have to land in Madrid, Lisbon, or Sevilla. But if you want to, s to spend a little more money, you can fly to Talavera La Real, which is 100 kilometers away from Cáceres. And of course, we have good connections with Lisbon, Madrid, and Sevilla by train. Mm, we are also connected via highway with Madrid, Lisbon, and also in 2009 with Sevilla. So we can even hire some buses like we did for you guys. So I think it is not a big problem. And uh, what would, who would the, the team consist of preparing this conference? Do you have already some people in mind? Yes. we. We work for the regional government as a group. We are currently 20 people in the group. We have organized a huge conference like the one we did this year in Badajoz with more than 3,000 participants. And there is a list of more than 50 events or congresses we organized in the wiki. You can maybe take a look at it. 
this this is a video of the last organized meetings. So, and we can also have the help from the Spanish developers too. And from you, of course. <laughs> okay, uh, <clears throat> two, two questions. One of them is to you, and one of them is uh, to the people who have uh, went to Extremadura. For you, uh, how hard is to, I mean, 91,000 people is not a big city. So, well, you didn't say how far it is from Madrid, and something very important is to be able to get all kinds of esoteric hardware in time. I mean, not having to travel two hours to get a firewire cable, for example. How, okay. how hard is to get uh, strange hardware in, in, in that area, and how far is it from Madrid? You can buy a firewire cable. No, I, I just uh, said as an example, it but is large computer stores. Yeah. Okay, 300 kilometers away from Madrid, 300 kilometers away from Sevilla, and 300 kilometers away from Lisbon. <laughs> okay, and, then and there is no need to go to Madrid, Lisbon, or Sevilla to buy okay. any kind of stuff you may need to. Okay, and for, for other attendees uh, to Extremadura, how easy was it for you to move around that area without knowing Spanish? Well, I have to say one thing before people answers. In the work sessions of Extremadura, we have been traveling around Extremadura, and the only one we did in a big city was the QA1, so the other ones were near the countryside in little villages, so maybe these people is not concerned about the the facilities we have in the big cities. So now you you can answer if you if you want. <laughs> Maybe Igars was in a little village or Ganef was in Badajoz. Well, there is a problem with that question because we never had to use the Spanish. We just uh, we were led around and uh, fed without the need of use of the local language or talking to the local people most of the time. So there is no really answer to this. Well, like, I can say that Cáceres lives from university and for tourism, so most of the mid-age people is able to speak English. And also in the restaurants of the old town, it is quite easy to be understood in English. Hi, um, I know you said it was wired. I'm just curious what the facility is wired with. I'm kind of worried about the repeat of a 10 megabit half duplex fiber or something like we had in Mexico. Problems with the connections. No, no, uh, what is the facility wired? You said the facility was already networked. Oh, what, yeah. It, what, what's the backbone in the building like? It is uh, wired with uh, 100 megabit per second network, but we can change those switches to use uh, one gigabyte switches if, if you want. Thank you. You're welcome. We want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want. <laughs> Christian, first. Yeah, that's more comment than a question. Uh, as a user of the Extremadura sessions, actually we were in a small village, so I can't really comment about the environment. But later we were, all the users of the Extremadura sessions were invited, invited in Badajoz, in this big conference complex, and we tried the network setting. So if I can just tell us, as a basic user, a non, not knowledgeable user of the network, the network basically rocked in this building. Right. As a user with, I think, 3,000 users and a lot of geeks hacking around in mm -hmm. a big uh, complex, it, it was nearly perfect from the user point of view. Thank so. you. I was just wondering, on the issue of the dates, you were talking about um, early spring or in the autumn. 
um, and then you're saying it's university halls of residence. Are the students there at those times of year? Or as in, would we have to be in the summer if we wanted to use the university halls? It would be better to, to be there in September, for example, or maybe on vacations, but there are free rooms too, so. The university course in Spain starts in October. So we can do the, well, they can do the DEF CON in, in September without problems. Although it is uh, worth considering, I know that uh, weather-wise, uh, Extremadura can be very hot, but it's worth considering uh, choosing the dates based on when DEPCONF attendees can attend. Uh, before May or after July, it's, uh, it's much harder not to, uh, uh, it's much harder for many people to travel. Mm -hmm. So please consider that when when uh, booking the place. As it looks like we are running out of questions, let's end the session and we can continue mailing this if something arises. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.